Hey there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Fantasy for the Ages, the show where a father and son get together and talk about fantasy, science fiction, and other nerdy things that we enjoy talking about. Well, sometimes we get together. Sometimes Zach's nowhere to be found. We've yet to have an episode where only Zach showed up, but there are plenty where it's just me because this is my hobby and my son entertains me and himself by joining along for many of the episodes but not this one this is just jim so thanks for joining me here so i'm not going to be all alone just talking to myself as i'm here to talk about some really good books today if you enjoy this episode as always i encourage you to like it down below uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments, and certainly look in the show notes of all the ways that you can interact with us through social media, Discord, and even becoming a Patreon supporter. All those things are super appreciated. What am I here to do today? Well, one of the things I'm doing is, of course, drinking, because you always create content better when you imbibe. But nothing overboard here today. I've just got a nice, chill Riesling. Which is really important because while my air conditioning is working, outside, oof, 106 degrees Fahrenheit here in suburban Portland, Oregon. We don't know how to handle heat like that here. So this is to kind of keep myself chill in the midst of the heat spell. And this is the mild day of the next three days. <whistles> hmm. This happens to be from Pomeroy Cellars. I've talked about them before on the show, but the grapes themselves are from De Brule Vineyards up in the Yakima Valley of Central Washington. Some of you know where that is. Again, we want to welcome all of you who are fairly new to our channel. We have had, in, just in the last uh, four weeks, uh, nearly 70 new subscribers. So, poof, things are blowing up, and we love that. It's so glad, so happy to see all of you here just having fun with Zach and I. So why don't we get to that today? Let's talk about some fun. I'm talking about books that you should reread, that I should reread, but I'm, you know, also saying you should too. But I need to clarify things a little bit here because way back at episode 176, this being 222, 176, I put out an episode already called Rereads I'd Love to Do. So what's the difference? Well, that was all about the books that I'd read in the past, some of them far, far past, you know, see the gray? There's some far past in my background. And I was thinking of these books that despite the mountain of books sitting on my to be read list, uh, these were ones that still might suck me in at some time. They're that good. Books that I might just really enjoy diving back into and doing a reread. This episode is not about those books, but I do want to just real quick read those off for you again. I referenced in those some great books. The Chronicles of Amber by Roger Zelazny. The Dragonlance series, mostly just the early books by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. The Foundation Saga by Isaac Asimov. The Dune Saga by Frank Herbert. The Dragon Riders of Pern by Anne McCaffrey, which I have started to reread. I'm halfway through now. Actually, I only have some books left that I've never read before, so I guess I finished the reread. The Guardians of the Flame series by Joel Rosenberg. The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan, in which I live in a perennial state of reread. The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. The Walking Dead by Robert Kirkman, and since that episode, I did a complete reread. That one got me. The Dark Tower series by Stephen King. The Arisen series, some great zombie apocalypse by Michael Stephen Fuchs and Glenn James. The Xanth series by Piers Anthony, which since that episode, I've kind of been thinking less and less it'll suck me in. Yeah. And finally, A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin, because when he finally comes out with more books, I'm probably going to reread. That's a pretty comprehensive list right there. And you got to admit, some of those are really good book series. If you want to know why I would consider rereading any of those in detail, you got to go back to episode 176. Again, I'm not rehashing all of that here for you today. This episode is about the books that I really should reread someday. Not, gee, it'd be fun to reread. Or, hey, 
might be nice to reread those sometime. Or, hmm, I wonder what it would be like to go and reread. No, wrong level. These are the books where I've come to the clear realization they are truly worthy of a reread. Nay, they demand a reread. And that I'm doing myself and these books a complete disservice by only reading them once. Indeed, I may become a better person by rereading these books. Okay, that's maybe a little over the top. But really, I believe any reader of science fiction and fantasy, you, me, anybody, should not settle for only one read of the novels I'm going to talk about today. So either don't read them at all, if you haven't, or understand going in, you're going to need to read these books twice. Maybe more. Because if you don't, you will have deeply missed out. You're shorting yourself by reading any of these just once. How many am I going to talk about? I've got six. So it's not a big list. But in my mind, there are six that have risen to that level. They demand to be reread or you are failing yourself. Now, again, some of the books in my previous episode would fit this category. Like, I'd say uh, Song of Ice and Fire would fit this. Definitely The Wheel of Time. But these are ones I did not talk about. And in some cases, I hadn't read them yet. Enough beating around the bush. What am I talking about? Here's the first one. Of the six, the least in need of a reread. Then again, that's kind of dumb. These just all need to be reread. Number six is World War Z, an oral history of the zombie war by Max Brooks. I promise this is my only zombie apocalypse thing in the list here. But this book is perhaps the single best entry that is about the actual rise of a zombie apocalypse, not the aftermath. Not people now turning into monsters against each other and some being good and some being evil and all the schmucks and all that stuff that almost everything is about in the zombie apocalypse literature genre. This just focuses on when it hits, when literally it hits the fan and they got to figure out what to do and people are dying and people are building walls and the zombies are going nuts everywhere in the first initial days. Nothing does it like World War Z. It's intense from start to finish. Oh, man, it's an adrenaline heart pounder. And I've only read it once. I've got to go back and reread that because uh, it happens so fast. You just get carried along by the book. I want to go and savor it some more. I know there's some goodness in there that I totally blew past the first time because you, you can't put the book down. You have to just keep reading. That's my first of six. Here's my next one. The Expanse by James S.A. Corey. Nine book series. There's also companion short stories and novellas. I've read through them all once. Now, I've also done content on them. So I've reflected on them and kind of skimmed through them. So you could say I've reread a little. I got more out of them when I did create content for them. But there's more there. you got to really read them more deeply to get all the connections, all the foreshadowing. Of course, I've also watched the Prime Video TV series now. And that's kind of like another reread, even though it's an adaptation. It's a, it's a fairly faithful adaptation. I love The Expanse in both versions, literature and TV. But that's one where, yeah, I think to truly get what I should be getting out of this series, I got to start over. I got to begin at the beginning and just read through. I know some people who The Expanse is one of those series that they just, they do it on repeat. Uh, Maybe it's on Audible. They're always listening to it and then they're starting again and it's a comfort read. There's so much in it that you just, you don't get unless you're careful and doing it more than once. So The Expanse, all right. My third of six would be, and this one's almost hard to say, The King Killer Chronicle by Patrick Rothfuss. Yes, yes, all of you who nagged on me for years to read this, Jim, it doesn't matter. It's not done yet. Oh, it's still hard to admit you guys were right. I've now read both the books. 
I have read the novella, The Slow Regard of Silent Things. There's a lot to these stories. They're big, especially the second book. It's it's really quite robust. I really enjoyed them. I know people who've reread them many times. And there's enough there they keep finding things to talk about and things to speculate on. Because, of course, we don't have the finish of this of this trilogy. Book three may or may not ever get done. Certainly, if it gets done, that'll trigger a reread. There's no way I can read the final book without rereading what's already there. But I may have to reread it before then to fully appreciate what I thoroughly enjoyed. Oh, my goodness. The King Killer Chronicle was great. Okay, number four of my six, The First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. Grim Dark at its finest. Now, uh, First Law is much longer than the trilogy. There's, I believe, nine books out there now because there's three standalones kind of in the middle of doing things and then another trilogy at the end. That first trilogy by itself is masterful. And I've only read it once. Zach is working his way through it. We're going to, I think he just finished. We're going to do content on the trilogy as a whole. But I know if I go back through it, I'm going to catch a lot of things that I did not get the first time through. The first trilogy by itself should be reread. But before I move on to the rest of the books, do I do the reread? Or do I read the rest of the books? They're all on my TBR. And then start a reread. That's a question. So I certainly would be interested from hearing from any of you as you watch this, what would you recommend? Should I be doing a reread of that opening trilogy first and then going on? Because it's been over a year since I read it now. I will do one eventually, though. I, I'm sure I did not get enough out of it the first time through. Joe Abercrombie's laying a lot down in these books. I do see a comment in the live chat. Uh, you've read King Killer twice already, but now you're not touching it again until there's a release date on Doors of Stone, book three. I, I can understand that. It's hard to stay optimistic when it's been, what now, almost 12 years waiting on another book. All right, number five of six. This is one I've actually been a little vocal sometimes that I can't see myself doing a reread. But as I pondered and prepared for this episode, I realized, who am I kidding? I got to reread this at some point. And that's the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. Four of the opening five books have been published already. They're huge. These are massive tomes of books. And I actually struggled getting into the first one. But I don't think I'd have that same experience now that I have four of them totally read. Because I love this series. And now with all of that information and context, if I start over again... I can imagine how much more sense this stuff will all make and how much more gratifying the series will be. I will get all of these little things that he was laying down that made no sense at first. Now it'll all connect. I'm sure this is a series that'll be way better the second time through. Some of you out there have already done multiple rereads. I have not, because again, big investment of time for me to get through this. But uh, it's worthy. There's enough in there. And I can think back, the four books I've read already, there are still some things that are a little, little hazy. It's so dense. There's so much, so many layers that I'm sure there are some things that did not make as much sense as they should have, even on a first time through. So I do need to go back and reread the Stormlight Archive. Now, do I do that before book five drops? I don't know. <laughs> Because that's a lot to suddenly read when I've got almost 1,300 books waiting on my TBR. Probably not. But maybe. Again, give me your ideas. For those of you that have reread already, was it so much better the second time that, yes, I do need to go and reread it before I read book five when it drops in 2024? I think that's what the rumor says. I would love your advice. All right. The last one. This is just hands down. I completely am eager and excited to start a reread, but I've got to finish it first. And that's what I'm doing right now. Steven Erickson's Malazan Book of the Fallen. Holy crap. This series is amazing. Now, I know not everybody enjoys Malazan, but it's my thing. I am totally getting this. I am not feeling like I'm confused or lost or struggling or stumbling at all. 
I'm almost a third of the way through book four, House of Chains. So I've got a lot to go still. 10 books in the core series and then a number of other supporting novels that are out there. I do plan to read them all, but wow, Malazan so far, I am just loving this. And already I can be thinking that just thinking back on Gardens of the Moon, Dead House Gates, I appreciate them so much better because of what I read in Memories of Ice and already now in House of Chains. Can I get the whole thing done? I want to reread this. This is going to be so good. Seeing all those connections again. Looking forward to that. Malazan, for sure. Those are my six, but there, there are a couple other things I, I want to mention here before I wrap this up today. One is that there's an honorable mention in here. It's not on my list because I've already reread it. And that's Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, Era 1 and Era 2. I read the original Mistborn trilogy, Era 1, and thought it was pretty good. Then I went on and read Era 2, thought it was pretty good, but that was just the first two books. Then when the third book came out, I decided I'm going to go do a reread before finishing. And of course, book three and then book four of the Era 2. Well, when I went and reread the first trilogy, it was so much better than the first time. I was shocked. Like, how did this get so much better? And I think that I had started the second era helped with that too. Then I reread the first two books of the second era, appreciated them way more than the first time. And then I did read the third and fourth book, each of them twice, once just to read them, once to do some content on them. They're fantastic. Great story, but so much better the second time through. So I've already done that reread. Will I ever do more? Who knows? There's more Mistborn coming out. We've got era three and era four planned. I don't know if I'll be around for all of it. Who knows? But I definitely can give that an honorable mention. Mistborn is something that should be read more than once to fully enjoy. And then I'll throw one in here that everybody told me. You haven't really understood this, fully read it until you reread it. And that's Gene Wolfe's The Book of the New Sun. Never. Nope. I know you're out there, fans. I know there's whole podcasts about the reread of Book of the New Sun, but I, oh man, I cringe even picturing doing it. This was so not my kind of SFF. Look, I throw no shade on you that love this, but I'm a firm believer. Everything is not for everybody, and that's not for me. I was capable of reading it. I went all the way through it. I probably shouldn't have, and I've got a whole nother little quick take episode that dropped today about that fact. It's okay to DNF things. I should have DNF'd, but no, people said this was so good. I forced myself, and I read all four books and the fifth book that came after it. It was brutal, grueling, and I can't think of anything I truly enjoyed in the experience, so there's no blooming way I'm ever going to reread that. Y'all keep trying to convince me you are all going to keep failing. But for those of you who've loved it, fantastic. And I'd love to hear what else? What are the other things out there in science fiction and fantasy that you reread? <laughs> uh, Daniel in the chat gave up on it early. You didn't, the, you're not a failure. Yes, Book of the New Sun, you were smarter than me. It wasn't yours, you let it go. There are some books that if you stop too early, you're going to miss out. I, I, that's not true of the Book of the New Sun. If you're partway through the first book and you're not getting it, it doesn't get better. It's more of that. If you're liking it, you go on. But if you're not, you can let it go, let it go, because you're not going to like it anymore. <sighs> I got to get off my Gene Wolf ranting. But that, uh, it's hard to think of something I really disliked as much as that and read all of it. Mm. But again, Tell me the things, put them down in the comments. What are the extra things you read on repeat? Or at least you've recognized, wow, the first time I read it, I liked it, but the second time was next level. And let me know, because if it's something I haven't read at all yet, that, well, I only have 1,300 on my TBR. There's always room for more. I love getting recommendations from others out here in the fandom who are enjoying the kind of books I do. So let me know. And I'll add it. Probably Zach will too. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate you uh, watching. For those of you who have been live, 
in the chat. That's been great. I love the extra comments coming. Ah, oh, there's one in the chat right now. The Culture Series by Ian Banks. That's on my TBR. I've heard so many good things about that one. So I look forward to getting to it. Maybe next year. Uh, that, that's a good one. Hopefully I love it as much as others who have shouted it out many times. Uh, I've got to get much more sci-fi into my my general game. I've got way more fan of sci-fi. Sci-fi there is coming. Ooh, the demon sci-fi. That's also on my TBR. So thanks for the shout out on that one. And keep them coming, people, because I want more books. Always want more books. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll talk to you next time.